Hello and welcome to the ScanZone end of year special, where we'll be looking back on an amazing year of tech. Delving deep into the world of artificial intelligence, heading on over to California to find out more about the suit up graphics card, the EVGA 1080 Ti Kingpin Edition, and letting you guys know how you can win an amazing prize in our end of year competition. But first, let's take a look at the ever rising world of the cryptocurrency. During the course of 2017, the value of the cryptocurrency Bitcoin, which has been around since 2008, has had a huge effect on the tech market. Compared to the start of the year when it was trading at £638 per Bitcoin, it peaked at £14,795, a staggering 2,218% increase. In contrast, the FTSE experienced a peak growth of just 5% this year. Driven by intense competition between GPU miners and financial speculators, the rise of Bitcoin has also driven up the price of graphics cards, high wattage power supplies and budget CPUs, as suppliers fail to keep up with demand. Nobody knows if Bitcoin will burst its bubble like tulip mania did in the 16th century, but it's certainly going to be an interesting watch. Another big story of 2017 is the ongoing battle over net neutrality. This is much more interesting and important than it sounds, and it boils down to replacing the current level playing field of the internet with a system that allows ISPs to charge for the faster transmission of specific types of internet traffic, or conversely, slow down other traffic. This could create a multi-speed internet and make it increasingly hard for startups to compete with existing businesses. The counter-argument is that net neutrality rules are limiting investment and innovation in new networks, and as a result, the US regulator, the FCC, recently voted to dismantle existing net neutrality rules. However, the fight is far from over, with citizens' rights groups plus corporate giants such as Microsoft, Google and Facebook all campaigning to reverse the controversial decision made by the FCC. From self-driving vehicles to sex robots, there's been a myriad of interesting AI stories during 2017. However, for me, the most informative story was not about what AI can be used for, but how quickly it can learn and improve on itself. A remarkable example of this was Google's AlphaGo, which had been developed to play Go, but it took just four hours to learn how to play chess and then went on to beat the leading chess program Stockfish. So just one example there to demonstrate the enormous capabilities of artificial intelligence, but how does it work? Well, we sent our Silicon Valley reporter David Bertolami to the NVIDIA HQ to find out. And here we are inside the super sleek demo room for NVIDIA Graphics. I'm joined here today with Samir Dillon, the Technical Marketing Manager for NVIDIA. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for meeting with us, David. So I thought I'll actually introduce our chips first. And this is our latest and greatest chip right here. Mm -hmm. This one's called Volta. May I? Yeah, go for oh, it. Thanks. It's actually the world's largest, most complicated parallel processor ever designed for mass production. Uh, this chip right here packs 5,122 <laughs> processing cores. Yeah. Holy cow, <laughs> that is incredible. 5,122. Uh, 122. 122. Uh, Out of control. Yep. How would you use uh, this day-to-day? -day? It's all across the board uh, for intelligent robots, mm -hmm. for autonomous drones, mm -hmm. uh, and even to some extent to do aerial inspections. Typically, you would have a set of instructions called programs that you would feed to your computers and mm -hmm. they would follow that very strictly. Mm -hmm. But now with the new technology called deep learning, which is a segment of artificial intelligence, we now give computers large right. sets of data right. so they can pick and choose what tools to use to solve a particular problem. Okay. So in this case, this is an image recognition AI which we showcase to help you understand how deep learning functions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And these are called neural networks because they're kindly loosely ba based on your brains okay. and how they function. Uh, in this case, uh, we actually used, uh, training was done by 1.2 million pictures mm -hmm. and we played a game with the computer. Okay. We showed it a picture and told it what the picture was, like flashcards, okay. right? So we showed it a bow tie, said bow tie. Okay. Showed it a tennis ball, said tennis ball. Mm -hmm. Right, showed it a fire truck, said fire truck, mm -hmm. and showed it so on, showed it 1.2 million pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on a DGX station, 
Uh, this uh, AI took about 40 minutes to an hour to tell, to say confidently, okay, I can distinguish between thousand objects. A thousand objects. Yeah, okay. so you can distinguish between these two, right? Based yep. on your human learning and knowledge. Immediately, yeah. Let's say if I ask you, what is this? What would you say? I would say that's a bow tie. Bow tie, right? Fashionable uh, bow tie. Bow tie, right? So you went through certain operations there, right? You actually went to a parallel operation of mm -hmm. looking at the shape, the size, mm -hmm. the texture, and then your knowledge base to come to a conclusion was a bow tie. Correct. Uh, all simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? So the same way if I ask you, what is this, what would just you say? A dog treat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, that's another name for it. So, but if you really want to label it as a human, what would you say? <laughs> I would say tennis ball. Tennis ball, right? So again, you actually went under a second, right? Mm -hmm. And you looked at all those things because you didn't have to go through tons and tons of if then else, mm -hmm. if then that, sure. if then if which. it's not this, then yeah, it's not it's that. It's not that. You. So that actually adds a lot of latency to the program altogether. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So now you will see the computer do the same things uh -huh. with artificial intelligence. Interesting. The same way at the same Let's speeds that you actually did. So we actually do real-time inferencing. Bow tie, hammer, shovel. Bow tie. Uh, if you can see the whole thing, it will definitely see uh, the bow tie. Loafer. <laughs> bow tie. But you can see. Yeah. It's and it fairly keeps accurate. going up there, yeah? yeah. Most definitely. I love it. But you can see, it'll do the same for the tennis ball. I wanted to say dog toy. Lemon. Uh, but you can see it's calling it a lemon, right? A yep. little bit because the lighting in the room is a little low. What impresses me about this one is lemon and then Granny Smith. Yeah, for they're, they're all very close. Yeah. And if it wasn't as intelligent as it is, you could say that looks like kind of a Granny Smith. Yep, yeah. But that's only point point zero, four, point yeah, four, point zero four. Yeah. yeah. But it understands context. So if I actually show it, my tennis ball actually comes with a few logos and things like that. It'll never go closer to Granny Smith. It'll go never. closer to exactly. golf ball. Yep. And it'll be 100% on the tennis ball. Yep. Wow. I want to play this game all day. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you so much for coming and visiting us. And thank you so much for taking the time. And anytime. I'm, I'm happy to come back anytime. And I'm really excited to see the future of artificial intelligence. And I'm constantly impressed by what NVIDIA has to do right. in the tech world. For more on NVIDIA, check out NVIDIA.com and across all their social media. And for more from Scan Computers, check out scan.co.uk. My name is David Bertolami, and we'll see you next time. 2017 has been a truly epic year in tech all round, and here at SCAN we've had lots of game-changing releases to keep us excited. Intel has had a busy year with the launch of both its 7th gen KB Lake and 8th gen Coffee Lake CPUs, as well as its new Skylake X Core X series. AMD meant business too with the release of multiple new CPUs based on the Zen architecture. NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1080 Ti was hot news when it launched in March of this year and it's continued to dominate the high-end space with its great combination of 3,584 cores plus 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. Hot on the heels of the GTX 1080 Ti was the Titan XP, dubbed the world's most powerful graphics card, with 3,840 cores and 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. Later on in the autumn, NVIDIA also released the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti, positioned between the GTX 1070 and 1080. An even more powerful Titan V is on the horizon too, with added tensor cores for blisteringly fast performance in HPC workloads, such as deep learning and AI. AMD also had a busy year giving its old Radium RX 400 GPUs a lick of paint and releasing the updated RX 500 series, which have proved incredibly popular with cryptocurrency miners. After a substantial delay, AMD also released the first cars based on the Vega architecture, the Radeon RX Vega 56 and Vega 64. Whilst over in the world of SSDs, Intel managed to sneak in one of the last major product launches of 2017, with its Optane 900P series of SSDs. SSDs are a dime a dozen these days, but these new drives ditch NAND in favour of 3D crosspoint memory, which is much lower latency and positively buzzes along. Check out our dedicated Optane a 900p tech spec video for more info. Some great products there, so with that in mind, we thought we'd ask your opinion on your favourites of 2017. A big thanks for everyone who got in touch by commenting on our Facebook post. We've had loads of you add on there, but we can only read out a few now. AMD's Ryzen seemed to get you all excited with Adam Jackson saying he loved the fact that AMD were back in the CPU game. 
and Arthur Ralph agreed, saying he loved how Ryzen had balanced the CPU market, along with loads of other positive reactions to Ryzen chips. Sai Krishnan Kumar said he thought that the true winners of this year have been you guys, the customers. And in addition to Ryzen products, he was loving Nvidia Max Q and the 1080 Ti. Tony Orobrink thought the Z370 motherboard and the GTX 1070 Ti were great. And Chris Theo said he loves his i9 7900X. I feel like I'm in the broom cupboard here. We've got a photo of Chris's awesome rig. Take a look at that. Nice one for sending that in. We do love your photos here at Scanzone, so make sure you send them in to us in the future, guys. Leopard Gaming are currently debating whether to get the 8700K and picked out the Kingpin 1080 Ti as a highlight. The 1080 Ti in general received a lot of love too, as to be expected, with the almighty Kingpin edition getting a few of you guys hot under the collar. Gavin Lewis Gilbert says this card is for the gods. And we also picked out the EVGA Kingpin as our product of the year. As for us here at Scan, it's all about pushing boundaries and EVGA have really gone out of their way to create the ultimate version of the 1080 Ti with the ultimate performance for those who want to overclock. The Kingpin holds several graphics cards world records, including 3D Mark Time Spy and Fire Strike Benchmarks, and Unigine Superposition, making it the undisputed king of the hill for extreme gaming performance. Once we'd chosen the Kingpin as our product of 2017, we got in touch with EVGA to let them know the good news. And they've only gone and sent us one to give away here on the Scan Zone. Stay tuned for entry details on how you can win this. They also invited us over to their HQ in California for an exclusive interview about this awesome card. I didn't go, of course, though, because, well, I like to stay here in glamorous Bolton. So we sent David instead. I'm not jealous at all. Honest. Thank you so much, Nikki. And that's right, I am here in the sunny Southern California headquarters for EVGA. It's probably a little warmer, nay, a lot warmer than where you are. Sorry, sorry to offend you. I think they're expecting us. Today we are going over the EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Kingpin graphics card of all graphics card. Let's take a look. And here we are with the beautiful NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Kingpin graphics card. And speaking of beautiful, just look at this thing. You guys put as much creative power into your just raw horsepower as you do making sure it looks beautiful. You know, we there's two parts of it. Definitely we want to make sure that it's an attractive looking card. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, pretty much almost every single design part of this card um, is influenced by performance. So. Uh, for example, the shroud has these holes in it, which improve sure. airflow. Of course, we have the three fans on there as well. The copper-colored fins are actually copper-coated, mm. which uh, gives some additional heat dissipation as well. And then, Beautiful and functional. Yeah, and functional. That's great. Um, so, uh, and then, of course, which is kind of cosmetic as well, we, have, uh, we relocated the power connectors from the top edge of the board, where they usually are, sure. yep. to the this area here. And I love the uh, the LEDs, the multicolor LEDs, right? So customize yeah, it however it you is like. RGB. Yeah. The default out of the box, it comes as white, which is you know kind of just a neutral color. But you can using the EVJ Precision software, you can configure it to your liking. Okay, yeah. so Kingpin, he was a uh, it is rather uh, an infamous overclocker. Right? Yeah. Is that where you got the name from? Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, Kingpin or Vince is uh, his real name. You could say is an employee at EVJ who breaks world records using hardware. Overclocking. Overclocking, and he uses extreme cooling like liquid nitrogen, which mm. is negative 200 something degrees Celsius in order to ach achieve these world records. So what he did is he said, okay, you know, I want to build a graphics card for, to break world records. Sure. I need this type of VRM circuitry. I need these features sure. in order to achieve that world record. And that's this card. So uh, this card does have EVGA ICX technology. So uh, ICX technology is a brand new uh, way to think about cooling. So sure. uh, traditionally, you have one sensor on the graphics card, which is in the GPU, mm -hmm. which controls all the fans. Of course, of course. So with ICX, what we did is we added an additional nine sensors. Uh, in addition to those nine sensors, we added a few controllers, chipsets on the, on the card, which mm -hmm. we call MCUs. MCU. Which, which are always monitoring those sensors mm -hmm. and controlling the fans. So in addition to being able to see all those temperatures, we actually are cooling different regions of the card depending 
on the temperature of those regions. Hence the three fans. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's not just more beautiful looks, it's more amazing functionality. Right. And so that then connects to the software on the computer and then you can control You the can fans control it. There. I mean you don't have to. If you just take a card and you plug it into a machine, it'll do everything automatically. Mm -hmm. But the side benefit is you're able to see everything. So for example, in Precision, which is free, you can download it. Uh -huh. Precision is uh, the name of the... Is the software sure. that allows you to overclock, monitor, all the, do that kind of stuff. Wonderful. I can, uh, with an ICX enabled card, I can basically hit this sensor button mm -hmm. and I can see here's all the, all the sensors. All right, yep. So the <laughs> three different fans, you can basically control those individually from Yeah, so precision. That's, that's the other benefit is that these are three independently controlled fans which we can control independently from within Precision itself. You mm -hmm. can set different fan curves on each of those three. Exactly. Can you can you preset these custom curves? Like if you know what kind of game you're playing, mm -hmm. or and you can program that and save that. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Yep. That's perfect. Yep. Um, all right, so I I've done some video editing. Uh -huh. um, obviously, this is very gamer centric. But who else in the real world would use something this powerful? Yeah. So certainly anything that is using the graphics card, whether it's um, content creation, 3D modeling, all that kind of stuff. Anything that's using the graphics card is, is going to benefit from a higher-end graphics card. Like, if you want the best, this is certainly the best. Yeah. However, GTX 1060, 1070, 1080, 1080 yeah. Ti are all excellent options, which will give you fantastic performance in really any... Any, any, any application. Yeah. Sure, so I don't need it. But, uh, but you want it. But I want it really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be honest. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for thank having you. us here yeah, today, man. And I look by. forward to, uh, to coming back again and visiting in uh, future products and product launches. Sounds great. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks, David. So as promised, you can have a go at winning this beast. It's the Kingpin 1080 Ti, complete with a T-shirt and a poster. And all you have to do is click on the link above for details on the many ways you can enter for free. It's been a comp-filled year here at SCAN and we've given away a truckload of tech, including a DJI drone, HTC Vive, loads of 1080Ti's, Z370 motherboards, an Optoma projector and even a 3XS system fully loaded with Corsair RGB products I helped to build. There'll be plenty more competitions like these from us here at SCAN in 2018, so make sure you follow us on all of our social media channels and subscribe to us on YouTube. Plus, hit that bell button to keep up to date with competitions, tech news, reviews, and events. Sadly, that's all from the Scan Zone for this year, but there is so much to look forward to as 2018 will no doubt be filled with amazing new developments and discoveries in AI. And there are a huge number of hot new products we'd love to tell you about, but I've got a corporate lawyer with a roll of duct tape in his hands standing just off screen in case I say too much. There is one story we can share with you though, which is how Intel and AMD will be joining forces to develop a range of Intel CPUs with integrated AMD GPUs. No, hell didn't just freeze over. These processors really will be coming to market in 2018. Have a good one and we'll see you next year.